So why do I have concerns about starches? I am concerned that starches may be damaging or problematic for the human gut, potentially raising things like endotoxin and leading to problems downstream in humans. Subjectively, I find that I feel better when I don't eat starches, and I don't want the things that come along with many of those starches. Many of those starches are in things like grains. I don't want to eat grains because I don't really want to eat phytic acid, a molecule that chelates minerals and prevents their absorption. I don't want to eat gluten, a molecule that is clearly a lectin that is harmful for many people's guts. I don't want to eat things like oxalates that come in beans or grains or nuts or seeds. And many of the root vegetables do come with problematic things associated with them, whether they're choconine or other solanines and white potatoes or other defense chemicals, even in sweet potatoes. If you want to eat roots as a source of your carbohydrates and you feel like you do better on those, then I would recommend cutting the skin off and cooking the heck out of them. I have just found, and intuitively, and based on the literature, I think that fruit is the least defended part of plants, and it's likely going to have less of these defense chemicals, which is the whole reason I got interested in keto and carnivore in the first place. What are these plant chemicals doing in humans? If you're thriving and you think you do well on pressure-cooked white potatoes without the skin, great, but I do have concerns about their effects on the gut, and I think there are better sources of carbohydrates. I've been talking to some professional athletes recently guys who are 6'1", 6'4", 220, 230 pounds. And for those individuals, it may be difficult to get enough carbohydrates from fruit and honey every day, especially when they're traveling. In that situation, perhaps white rice is the best uh, option for carbohydrates. Without the hull, less arsenic, pressure-cooked white rice is gonna detoxify many of the lectins in there. Again, it's a grain, it's gonna come with some added issues, but perhaps that's the most benign for many people who really want large amounts of carbohydrates. I don't eat white rice. I experimented with it years ago, but I feel better on fruit, honey, maple syrup, lactose from milk, et cetera. And I'll say that as a 5'9", 165 pound individual who's pretty active, I can easily get 300 grams of carbohydrates a day from milk, maple syrup, honey, fruit, fruit juice. I've got a juicer. I, like I said, I make fresh squeezed orange juice every day in my house from oranges here in Costa Rica. So there are options, but I think the problem for many people is if they're traveling, professional athletes, and they don't have the ability to make their own fruit juice, they're sort of at the mercy of what the teams are feeding them. In that situation, I can understand maybe some extremely boiled potatoes without the skin or white rice. I think white rice would be my option for the least harmful carbohydrate source in those situations. But if you're at home and you have the ability to prepare your own food, I think it's worth an experiment to cut out those starches. There's also an interesting set of literature in cows showing how harmful grains and starches are. This is relevant both to the grain-fed cattle conversation and the um, grain-fed human conversation. So in, in cows, it's well-documented that ruminal uh, lipopolysaccharides, so the rumen, um, of cows is one of their stomachs, uh, their LPS concentration, so the lipopolysaccharide concentration, and the inflammatory response is increased in during grain feeding. So the title of this paper is Ruminal Lipopolysaccharide, that's endotoxin, concentration and inflammatory response during grain-induced subacute ruminal acidosis in dairy cows. Basically, when you feed a dairy cow uh, grains, they get subacute ruminal acidosis, which isn't a good thing. They abbreviate it as SARA, S-A-R-A, and they have increased lipopolysaccharide. This is what I'm concerned about, that in humans who are eating lots of starches and grains or tuberous things that are not really well cooked, that are gonna have a lot of starches in them, are we having increased lipopolysaccharide, increased endotoxin happening in humans too? And could that lead to systemic inflammation, et cetera, et cetera? Here's another paper showing the same things. It's almost the same title, but it's a different paper, ruminal lipopolysaccharide and inflammation during grain adaptation and subacute ruminal acidosis in steers. So. Again, if you have questions about whether you should be eating grain-fed or grass-finished meat, perhaps those articles will help you understand that feeding a cow grains creates subacute ruminal acidosis, increased lipopolysaccharide into the organism, inflammation. I think that's a solid amount of evidence that grain-feeding cattle leads to inflammation in those cattle, and they may not be the healthiest things for humans to eat, which is why I'm a huge fan of grass-feeding, which is why I'm a huge fan of grass-feeding and grass-finishing a entirely evolutionarily consistent way of feeding cattle that are gonna be eaten by humans, whereas grain finishing is not. That's a whole separate podcast, but again, the concern would be gut inflammation, problems with anti-nutrients coming along with those starches, which is why I choose to eat my carbohydrates from fruit, honey, maple syrup, lactose from dairy.